What's up, Star Trek fans? Welcome to Star Trek Late Night. We're back with another video. It's been a while, uh, and in my last video, of course, I was just depressed. I've had more time to think on this stuff, so I feel like I want to talk about it a little bit more. Um, I'd like to come back to this channel and do this more often, but I'm not going to spend a bunch of time babbling about that. Bottom line is I hope you subscribe, I hope you click the like button, and I hope you watch maybe some of my previous videos after this, and just keep in engaging and stay with me, man. Um, you know, uh, it's great to be back. It's not really great because I think that's, I don't have a lot of confidence in Star Trek right now, as you've heard me say. Um, but if you want to support the channel, just subscribe or leave a super thanks down below, leave a comment, whatever. You don't have to do anything, but feel free to leave comments at least. Now I can interact with those, but there's a major problem here with the Vulcan thing. Big problem. And we're going to talk about this, and then we're going to talk about the comedy series that's coming out and, you know, all that sort of thing. I think my problem with Star Trek right now is that we really don't have an authentic Star Trek. And and before I get to the problem in this video really quickly, why can't they... I, I know this sounds crazy. Everybody loves nostalgia right now, don't they? They, they love going back, the Ghostbusters, the Star Wars. Everybody loves nostalgia. But what I've really noticed is people are not just nos nostalgic, right? They want to go back and, and relive the exact stuff they liked, but with new stories. Why couldn't Paramount or Skynet or whatever the hell they're called now, I don't even know, why can't they go and literally pick up where the next generation movies left off or literally make a OG Star Trek. Why not do that with the, with the popularity of TNG and deep space nine and Voyager and the original series and everything else. Why not go build some cheap sets with a slight upgrade, you know, like Star Trek legacy could have been, but why not go back and tell some stories from that era? Why not even go back to, like, when Patrick Stewart and the whole TNG crew is is in that era? Why not go back and tell a story from a different ship and, and bring back the writing style of the next generation and Deep Space Nine and stuff like that? And why not do, like, 15 or t 10 to 15 episodes on a new ship? and Or, or maybe have uh, a new ship every season but it takes place in that era the the sets wouldn't be that crazy to build everything would be much cheaper right it would be that nostalgic throwback and it would be that old campy style and you would please so many people from ages 30 and up that would watch that because it's like this is the type of star trek i remember and they literally tried to tell a story like those eras and they maybe even got some old school writers to jump on board and things like that. How awesome could that be? And you could still have all this modern -y new Star Trek going on, but have this kind of like sidebar that would fill up uh, the, the appetites of the old people uh, like myself. But anyway, let's move on to what the problem is in this. Big problem. First of all, I will say, I love it. Ohura's hair is starting to look more long and they're trying to fit her like... The original series, all that sort of stuff, that's really cool and everything. Um, uh, Carol Kane is funny and everything is funny. My problem is I feel like this is the effect of the Orville. Like they, they were like, man, the Orville is having such a fun time and telling serious stories. What if we could do that? And, and I, I just think that Strange New Worlds is a little too si silly. I think it's just a little too silly. It reminds me of like SNL Star Trek. Like if SNL and the Glee Club put on Star Trek, that's what I'm seeing here. And I don't like that because I don't... Oh, shit, just knocked a cup all over the place. Because I don't think that's really what Star Trek is supposed to be. But, you know, once in a while, some jokes and things like that, fine. But the major problem with this... And by the way, they're crapping on Spock again. How many times have they crapped on Spock every episode? I've proven it to you. I've shown you the clips. Go back and watch yourself. If you don't believe it, go watch it. Every episode almost is, Oh, you stupid Spock. And, oh, Spock, you idiot. Everything is Spock is a moron. It's so weird. Yes, it's a little bit hinted to in the original series. McCoy, Kirk, they they, they, they go, come on, of course, Spock. You know, they're always giving Spock a hard time a little bit. 
Um, so I understand where that sort of is coming from, but it's like every episode. It's not that he that it's not them not understanding his Vulcanus, his Vulcan nature. It's them. It's just it's them just crapping on him. It, it doesn't make any sense. So again, that problem still exists in this series. That's an issue. Um, the other problem problems are the canon issues. So if you could fix the canon issues, not crap on Spock as much, not be so silly every episode. Um, this show would be slightly better. It would go from a 5 or 6 out of 10 for me to like a 7 out of 10. But again, Vulcans learn over years and years and years how to suppress their emotions. But yet when they're injected here and they become Vulcan, even more Vulcan than Spock apparently, um, they, they should be all acting crazy. They should all be acting wild, like, oh, are you looking at me funny? Like, I'll look at you how I want you to look at. And then, every, and then you know, the doctor could have said, well, I don't get it. I, I, I thought they would be, like, logical. We would have, this is, why are they acting so erratic? Something's wrong with the serum. And then Spock could have said, no, the Vulcans take years to learn to suppress their emotions. I went through the, 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 they have never experienced being Vulcan before. In most ways, Vulcans are more violent and crazy than humans. Like, and, and then the doctor's like, oh, you're right. I didn't think of that or something like that. And then they're just all crazy and whatever. And, 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 um, maybe Spock could have been like, I must, I must mind meld with all of them individually together, uh, by joining my thoughts I can transfer my logic and my blah, blah, blah into all of them so they can be more calm and try to resist their ferocious, like, in illogical, savage urges. And, and then then the doctor could have been like, could that work? And he'd be like, yes, like, blah, blah, blah. And then they have to mind meld with Spock so that Spock can transfer his, like, sort of, like, you know what I mean, how to, like, control your emotions into each of them. And then that would have made Spock look smart and and would have made him look impressive because he spent those years suppressing those Vulcan savage emotions. But instead, it's not. It's, oh, you stupid Spock. We're all really Vulcan and you're an idiot. Like, that's not possible. So, But I get it. You have to suppress your, you know, like, your logic in your logic. You have to suppress your logic to accept their logic, which you can. But if you just be like, oh, who cares? This is all stupid. Like, then you, okay, just let's, listen, there was an episode of The Next Generation where everybody gets turned, or a few of them get turned into kids. And it's a little ridiculous and their clothes all change too. Not ju it's just very, there's some things in all of Star Trek all the time that are like, wait a minute. But, like, this was one of those major things, like, you don't know how Vulcans work, you don't know how Kalinar works, even, and all those sort of things. Even Spock hasn't done that yet, and they are all just trying... Now, maybe there's something in the serum that's going to come out, like, it's already made to make them that way, and that that's explained in the episode, and if it is, then, wow, I'm impressed, and I'll give them... Man, I'll give them a lot of credit if they thought of that. And if they can't, and this isn't coming out for a while, hey, ADR people, call up somebody, Ethan Peck or somebody, to throw in a dialogue really quickly that says, like, uh, doctor in the serum is a da, 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 and then explain that because this is going to drive people nuts. But then again, with all the other stuff that they ignore and they don't care about, they probably don't give a shit about this. Um, but I mean, right away, most people who have a brain about Star Trek are like, wait a minute. Listen, I'm not into all the super nitpicky stuff, but to me, this is not nitpicky. This is like very well known in the fiber being of a Vulcan. Like, if you've watched Star Trek, like, I mean, oh my God, bro, this is just the Fast and the Furious. But anyway, I think it's cute. I think it's kind of funny. I think that if they didn't crap on Spock so much and it wasn't always so silly and this didn't feel like SNL Star Trek, if they just toned some of that down, they had a few better writers on top of the ones they have, and maybe they even had a few continuity people who could bring things up like I'm mentioning, that they could just, you know, touch up a couple little things to make it really, really slam home. Then you'd have a show that I would think maybe is a 7 out of 10. And if I think it's a 7 out of 10, I'm going to watch it and I'm going to love it. I might even buy it on Blu-ray. Because this show at times I do like and I and I think this is pretty good. It's a little too different than the old Star Trek, but it is a little bit reminiscent of the 
of TOS if you made TOS silly er and weird er like I, I you know it's just it's not it's not there though it's the worst of like I would never watch any other Star Trek except for Star Trek Picard season three I would never watch any of the new Star Trek ever 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 but if these guys could just tighten this up a little bit I might have watched this show but. Season one had was like all right-ish, but I was like, you know what? Maybe that's their season one TNG. You know what I mean? Although I think TNG season one is better than Strange New World season one, but Strange New World season one had some little moments that were I thought were, I thought were nice, and I accepted it. I thought it was all right, and I thought if they tightened it up and got even better, like they could really maybe they'd have something. But they went in the other direction. So we'll see what season three brings us, but it doesn't seem well or seem good rather based on the fact that the first thing I'm seeing is the Vulcans not acting like Vulcans. These Vulcans should be out of their minds and like savage and like, like, ah, like we're, they should be like, I mean, you could argue that they wouldn't be that whacked out, you know, that they would be more like Romulans and, you know, the sort of thing. But I, I just feel like we're missing something here. And maybe we're nitpicking, but when you're only given this little clip to analyze, that sticks out pretty big. Unless you're like a new Star Trek fan and you don't know anything or whatever. And you're like, <laughs> what are you so mad about? <laughs> um, but other than that, it is what it is. Um, now we have another show coming uh, to, uh, just announced. It's not Legacy. We're never going to get Legacy. Terry Metalis went to do Marvel because Star Trek said, no, thank you. The best rated show of the new Star Trek series is ever the best rated show. Star Trek Picard season three. Picard season one. Crap. Picard season two. Crap. Reviews. Not great. Season one. Reviews. Not great. Season two. Reviews. Terrible. Season one. Viewership. Eh. Season two. Viewership. Bad. Season three. Viewership. Most viewed new thing of Star Trek ever, except for like the I think the first season of Discovery, the first episode of Discovery, because obviously those first new Star Trek in like ten years, everybody's like, "What is this gonna be?" And then it was crap, and everybody stopped watching. But do you know what I mean? Star Trek season three, Picard, it's the most successful. Um, that being said, you think you would hire Terry Metalis, or you do anything to bring on Terry Metalis, no matter what it takes. They didn't do it. So now we have a new show that's coming, and it's going to be in the 25th century during the Picard era. So that's good news. But it's not Legacy. But it's taking place during what would have been Legacy. Why is it taking place during that time frame? I'll tell you why. Uh, and of course, we can't get a new Star Trek series taking place during the Picard timeline that we all love in the 25th century. I instead, it's a comedy show on a planet that's not Starfleet, which, by the way, thank God, because you know what? I don't care. If you do a show on, on a planet and it has nothing to do with Starfleet, fucking fine, because you can do you do stupid shit, whatever you want. I won't watch it. It won't be that great. And if they screw things up, it doesn't matter, because in my opinion, it's not real anyway. But the planet should be, I would think the planet is Ryza, right? Because it's a planet, it's a comedy, all these things could happen on Ryza, it's a vacation planet, I would assume. And, and, and the reason why I think they picked the 25th century is because they have all those costumes from the Picard season. They've got all the costumes. So whenever Starfleet people are coming in or relaxing or going on vacation and they're shown in the background here or there, there's some Starfleet people on the planet relaxing and stuff like that. They have all the uniforms. They don't have to make new uniforms. Nothing. The people on the planet, they can all wear whatever clothes. And um, all the Starfleet uniforms are already made. So you're good to go there. And they might even be able to recreate some of the models and the digital ships they used on Picard. So um, that's just easy right there. It's a layup for comedy. Um, I don't like comedy Star Trek, so don't really care. If it was Ryza, I'd be interested in maybe watching a couple episodes. That's that's funny. Haha. <laughs> Okay, I'm done watching it now. Uh, but if it's not Ryza, that's weird. But if it's not, whatever. Who cares? Um, then we have Section 31. That just looks like trash. Uh, I get it. It's the Mirror Universe. So literally, it's the Mirror Universe is like the anti-Star Trek, right? Everything about the good world of Star Trek is the opposite. It's all bad, dark, crazy, action, cutthroat, murderous, terrible. 
So, like, they can get away with doing that, and I know we all overreacted in a way, like, this doesn't look like Star Trek. Well, of course it doesn't. It's the mirror universe. It's the fucking mirror universe. Of course it doesn't look like Star Trek. But, like, we've had so much not Star Trek during these last ten years of this new Star Trek that people just can't even accept that because they're just like, oh, they want real Star Trek. I'm telling you, I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you, if you, for Christ's sake, if you see this, if, but you won't care, you should hire Terry Metalis. But even if you, if you can't hire Terry Metalis, hire me. Call me. I'll do it for almost nothing. And we're going to build the old sets. We're going to do all that stuff. We're going to do campy. And we're going to release seasons that took place during Voyager, during TNG, during those times with all brand new stories involving a ship of the... We won't do ship of the week. We can do ship of the season or we can do a ship, a new ship. Doesn't matter takes place during the TNG era. Not a big deal. Let's do that. Why don't you do that? People will be enthralled to see that as long as you do it just like those shows. I'm telling you, I think if they did that, it would be the most watched thing. Like Like TNG, TOS, and all those are on such a repetitive watch on Netflix or whatever on Paramount now, it's got to be, that I, I, like, don't, wouldn't you want to add another one to that catalog? Do you know what I mean? But I don't know. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe there's some kind of thing I don't know about. There's analytics that I don't know about that say that that's a bad idea. I don't know. But I feel like it would be cheap to make that show, and you could make it work. And I feel like you could make a cheap show. You could do one or two episodes. Do an old do an old style pilot. Do an episode. Do a one hour episode, uh, a two part episode, or a one hour episode, in that style, and then see how it does. And if it does really well and people love it, keep it going. Why not do that? I don't know. That's my opinion. Anyway, that's my rant about the new Star Trek. This is Star Trek Late Night. If you like this show, what I talk about and what I do here, um, show the love down below in the comments. Leave comments. Share this video everywhere you can. Tell everybody about it. And what do you agree with or disagree with with what I said? I'm open to disagreement or agreement or other opinions. We're all Star Trek fans, and some of us love some things and don't love the other things. It's all Star Trek in its own way, but um, I do feel like they're taking liberties with Star Trek. And boy, we did not know what we had with Gene Roddenberry, Rick Berman, and um, God, who's everybody that used to work on Star Trek. Um, it's just crazy, um, what we used to have. Brandon Braga. Brandon Braga, Rick Berman, I love you guys. If you ever see this, I love you to death. I love you so much, and I feel so terrible for all the criticism that you guys got back in the day because even the biggest steaming pile of turd that came out of you guys is better than most anything that's been done in the last 10 years Star Trek-wise. It's not even close. Brandon Braga, Rick Berman, and all of the writers of Star Trek ever from 2001 to the 60s, all of you, you all deserve hugs, kisses, accolades, awards, like to be cherished. I will gobble you inside out, and I'll throw Terry Metalis into that group too. I love you all. Thanks for watching. This is Star Trek Late Night, and we'll see you in the next episode.